As the war on Gaza enters the seventh month, the cracks are widening in Netanyahu's cabinet. Israel's longest serving prime minister is facing increasing pressure from the United States, growing global criticism over civilian casualties in Gaza and growing protests at home, demanding his resignation for failing to bring Israeli hostages back home. A new round of ceasefire negotiations began this week in Cairo, but a senior Hamas official said talks were on hold after the group received a proposal from mediators. On the other hand, Israel said its foremost objective is the release of hostages. On Monday, Netanyahu said Israel is set on total victory over Hamas that will require entering Rafah. Rafah is a southern Gaza city where much of the enclave's displaced population is currently sheltering. Israel says the region is the last resort in eliminating the terrorist battalions. While foreign governments and organizations have urged Israel against storming Rafa over fears of a bloodbath, far-right Israeli ministers denounced Netanyahu's decision to reduce military presence in Gaza. Ben Giver said if Netanyahu decides to end the war without a large-scale offensive in Rafa to defeat Hamas, he will not have a mandate to continue serving as prime minister. The Israeli security cabinet meeting is currently underway. Meanwhile, in addition to the growing calls to allow aid into the besieged strip, there is also rising pressure to get the hostages released. Hamas took 253 people hostage in its October 7th attack. Out of 253, 129 continue to remain in captivity. And even out of these, some are believed to be dead. The choices which Netanyahu faces are tough. There is domestic pressure if he fails to get the hostages freed or back at home. On the other hand, a Rafa invasion will mean international isolation. If Netanyahu cuts a deal with Hamas to get the hostages out in return for a ceasefire, his far-right allies could revolt. For all the latest news, download the Wion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.